Hello and welcome to Tempestuous Stained Glass Copper Foil and Soldering Techniques video. Today we'll be showing you three projects. First of all, starting off with our little frog. Second of all, moving on to the mirror. And last but not least, our 3D sconce. I'll be showing you the techniques of cutting, foiling and soldering. Um, hope you enjoy. Just a quick demonstration to show you the three main different types of soldering that we do. So apply the flux to our joins. Now the first, the main sort of soldering technique that you will be doing is called a bead soldering. It's a nice rounded profile. Use the corner of the soldering iron, melting the solder on to the head. Pulling the soldering iron gently towards yourself, constantly adding solder as we go, mm -hmm. keeping a nice ball of solder at the end of the tip. This should create a nice rounded bead. If there's any bits that need to go over, we're just using a corner of the soldering iron, heating that bead and lifting directly up. That should even out the level of your join. Okay, that's the first technique. Second technique, which you use on backs of projects, inside of projects, is the flat solder. Now I'm using the flat part of the soldering iron tip. Again, Heating a small amount of solder to the tip and then dragging along. You don't need to add as much solder here as you do in a rounded solder bead. The idea of this is just get a nice join, flat and even all the way down. Now another process that we do throughout the DVD is called tinning. This is when we strengthen the foil on the edge of the glass, especially when we're doing 3D projects. When it comes to putting projects together, it gives the foil a lot more strength. <coughs> enabling you to put your project together more easily. Just applying some flux around the edge. Now, just using a small amount of solder, you're just running that all the way around. You really don't need a lot of solder at all for this. Flip over. And again, just going around this outside edge. You don't want to put a lot of solder on there when you're tinning, because when it comes to putting a project together, the excess solder, if you've got too much on there, might get in the way, and it might put your pattern out slightly. So we're just using a real thin coat, around that all the way around. Okay, so that's the three main solder techniques that we'll be using in this DVD.
This is project one, it's Kermit the Frog. For this project we're going to be using two different colours of glass. First glass being the green cathedral, using cathedral glass so we can see through the glass and enable us to cut straight from the pattern. And also we'll be using the white glass for his eyes. First of all, we're going to cut, cut a thin strip, just slightly larger than the piece you're going to be cutting out, to save on glass. Um, straight scores, top to bottom, holding the glass, cutter at 45 degrees, and it towards us. And simply just break out with our hands. <clears throat> now we're going to cut this leg out in three different scores. First score being around the top. Use a grazing pliers to break this out. That gives us a top curve. Now all we need to do is the two side pieces. Again, just straight scores. Following the score around to the end. Now I'm just cutting the inside the black line of the pattern, which is going to leave us enough room for the foil. So when it comes to putting our project together, it's not going to get too big. Take off any little sharp edges of your grazers. And then we have it placed one. <clears throat> also I'm going to do the body now, again cutting the strip slightly larger than the piece needed, saves on glass, <clears throat> now again we're going to take the more difficult cuts out first which will be this fine point at the bottom. I'll do two scores together here. I'm just going to use the snappers in this case. And the grazers. There we go, slowly coming on now. As if by magic, all cut out. Now this is the time, before we foil it, to check, just to make sure the glass fits the pattern. If there's any edges that need to be grind down, ground down, or just addressed with the grows and pliers, this is when we do it. Slight little edges like that making sure it all fits to the pattern so we have a nice even solder bead once it's all foiled yeah, looks perfect just going to talk you through the glass star grinder here it's a standard grinder that we sell in the shop comes with a 3 quarter inch head and a quarter inch head quarter inch head for tight internal curves the 3 quarter inch is general purpose use Grinder is water filled in the reservoir underneath the surface. We're using an Aquaflow brush on here. It draws up the water onto the head, keeping the head constantly supplied with water whilst grinding. Also, I've got an ice shield stand on here. 
You can either have the ice wheel stand or just wear a pair of goggles. I find the ice wheel stand is perfect. Saves so putting them big hefty goggles on your eyes every time. Now, just need to do a little bit of grinding on the frog just to make sure all the edges are nice and smooth for the foil to attach. Now we don't need a lot of pressure. Just let the head do the work. And we don't need to go all the way around, just taking off all the high points. Ensuring a nice tight fit between our pieces of glass. Piece of cloth, just to wipe the edges off. There we go, no sharp edges now. All smooth down, perfect. It's not an essential tool, but it's a very handy tool. Before foiling, we need to prepare the glass by uh, cleaning the edges so that the foil sticks to the glass. So using a glass cleaner and a cloth, just wipe around the edge. Especially if you ground the edges beforehand, uh, you'll get the glass dust build up on the edge of the glass. So cleaning the glass before foiling makes for a good contact with the foil to the glass. So we'll just do that. What I'm using here is just a glass cleaner. For this project we are going to foil it by hand. Now the foil I'm using is 732 black back foil. It's got a black backing. Reason being I'm using cathedral glass. I'm going to be darkening down darkening down the foil, the solder, and you don't want to see the copper backing through the glass. So that's the reason why I'm using the back black. The foil comes in three different three different backings. You've got silver backed, black backed and copper backed. Okay, to start at the edge, looking down the end of the glass, so you get the glass bang in the middle. Slowly wrapping the glass with the foil. I'm using 732 foil as well. Gives a nice edge on both sides of this glass. It's 3mm glass we're using. All I'm doing now is just folding over the edges, front and back. Okay. Once we've got to that stage, we need to burnish the foil onto the edge of the glass. I'm using a glass style hand crimper here. Good thing about the crimper, hand crimper, is it does both sides at the same time. Just running that around, slight bit of pressure with your finger and thumb on the end of the tool. And there we go, this is the first piece. Just going to do the other leg. Show you in a little bit more detail. Starting on the edge. Wrapping the foil slowly. Best to take your time over this part. Just want a nice neat edge. The neater your foil goes on, the neater your work will look like in the end once it's soldered. I use a pair of scissors here just to keep a nice clean edge on the foil. 
Again, just folding over. Again, using the quick uh, the the glass star crimper. Okay. I'm just going to finish foiling it. Now, because I'm a professional, I can do it super quick. So, just watch this. There we go, ready for soldering. Okay, now the project's all foiled. We just need to pin it in place before soldering. Now, the board I'm working on is a heat resistant soft board, ideal for soldering on. Uh, doesn't burn your work surface, it just burns the board. You only need a few pins, don't need too many. Just hold it in place while soldering. There we go, just two more for his eyes. And there we have it, ready for soldering. Okay, project's ready for soldering now. Let me just talk you through a few of the tools that we'll be using. First of all, we're using a 100 watt temperature controlled iron here. Comes with various tips, various heats. Uh, you get the 3 mil, 6 mil, or the 9 mil size tip, and two different heats, hot and a cooler tip. For foiling, we generally use the hotter tip, it enables us to work quicker. And for lead work, we use a cooler tip. It's good to keep the tip nice and clean. We've got a heat resistant damp sponge here, which gets rid of any dirt off the flux or the solder. Also, if it does build up, we have a tip tinner. This is a strong flux and solder paste. It retins the end of the tip. And it lasts a long time, it melts back into position, and that keeps the tip nice and shiny. When the build up of black flux gets on there, the heat stops coming out the end of the tip, which slows down your working time. So always keep it nice and clean. Also we're using the gel flux here. It's a nice strong flux, easy to clean off. Just using the flux brush. That's about it really, ready to go. So we use the flux brush, dipping in the flux, apply it to our work. First of all, I'm just going to tack the joins, and then we can take the pins out. There's no need to tin the work for a flat project. Tinning the work is generally for three dimensional shapes. This is just a flat project, there's no need for it. The solder I'll be using is 50 50 solder. It's 50% lead and 50% tin. Reason being, you get a nice rounded bead with this solder. And I'll just show you, I'm just going to tack the pieces on first. Using a flat other solder line. 
just tack soldering our pieces together. Now you can get rid of the pins. Okay, bead soldering, slightly different. Using the point of the soldering, soldering iron, we want to create a little ball of solder. So I'm just melting the solder and it's flowing down the tip, creating that ball, using the corner of the soldering iron and just pulling out towards ourselves. As you can see, you can run quite a nice, smooth, soft bead. Don't worry about the joints, just keep the soldering iron there a little bit longer. You're not going to do any damage to your work. Now where we have a join here, we just keep the soldering iron there for a little bit longer and it just blends all the joints together. Don't be worried if you've got a mistake in the soldering iron, soldering. We can always go back with it with the iron. So if you've got a big lump, we can just get rid of that solder by dragging it off to the side. And we just we go over that bead again. We can also use this solder that we've taken off. So nothing's wasted. A little bit more flux to that. When going over your work, just heat up the solder bead and then just lift the tip directly back up. That will give you a nice even finish on your bead. There's no need for painting the solder on, solder on. A lot of people do that. Just heat and lift directly up. Okay. So that's the front surface done. I'm just going to do some detail on the eyes. I'm going to create them with solder. Make a huge ball, like so. And the other one. Just join onto it. Okay, now we need to do the end. And that's why we weren't worried about the solder hanging over the edge. I'm just gently tapping, moving the excess solder that we have on there around just to form a nice bead on the outside edge. This stops the salt the foil from being pulled off. And working with the project, keeping it constantly moving, otherwise the solder will just run run off. Let's get a little bit warm, so just be careful with your fingers. Use any little bits that fall off.
Okay, with the edges done, just going to tidy up the front side. Okay, I'll remind all that's left for us to do now is just to attach his cheeky little mouth. Tin copper wire comes in different gauges. I believe this is the 18 gauge. Marking. Just A little bit of flux on both ends. It's a small bit of solder on either end. Just going to give it a quick clean down now. What we use here is a quick clean. It neutralizes the fluxes and the patinas. Being careful on the edges of the solder, it's always working in an inward motion. Don't worry about the small bits of solder that are stuck onto the glass, they just come off. A little bit of help. Do one side, just clean the back. Okay. Like I said earlier, we're going to darken this down. So I'm just going to put my rubber gloves on because we're going to be using the patina, the blacket patina. And we don't have black fingers, so we use rubber gloves. We're using a patina pad, slightly abrasive pad. It keys up the solder, enabling the patina to take. We're using a blacket patina, safety bottles. Now, we'll just put a small amount on the pad. Don't need a huge amount, and then just rub over the solder joints. As you see, instantly that takes it down to a nice dark and finish. Get a nice dark finish, I'll do one side first, turn over, do the back, let the other side take for a bit before we clean it off. Really is as simple as that. Just go around the edges. Again, we use a quick clean, just neutralizes all the acids. Just a little bit there, just didn't quite tank. <coughs> Paper cloth, just take it 
taking all the excess off. Again, on the back. What we like to use at Thamesford is just a furniture polish just to finish it off. Gives the patina a nice shine and sheen. Some people will say how do you get it so shiny and clean after patinaing? Well, all it is is furniture polish, Mr Sheen. Again, do the back. And there we have it, came the frog. Okay, for the mirror project, this is a pattern for the mirror project. We're going to be using opalescent glass, which is glass which you can't see through. So, in order to cut the pattern out, what I've done, I've cut two clear templates, which I'm going to overlay onto the glass and draw around, and then I'll be able to cut the pattern out. You need to cut a repeat of four, because we're doing it in two different colours, so four each of these patterns. I'm just going to do one first. Draw around with a black marker pen. Pattern's drawn out, so we're using a score stick. It's got a non-slip backing on it. Now we need to cut to the inside of this black line that we've drawn on the glass. Finger and thumb either side and break. and keep into the inside of the black line just to ensure that all the pieces are exactly the same size and keep to the pattern I'm just going to do one of the smaller pieces again mark it with the marker pen Okay, now we repeat that process four times for each different colour, and then we'll have the whole pattern cut out. As you can see, the glass has all been cut out now and partially foiled and pinned to the board. Now, for the mirror project, I'm going to be using the glass star hand foiler and the spinny reel, copper foil spinny reel. The spinny reel holds a foil stops it from unravelling and getting tangled up and the hand foiler is a good tool it takes the backing off for you it centralises the glass into the centre of the foil so you get a nice, e nice even edge on both sides of your glass and the glass slots into the channel like so just to get it started and then we pull the tool towards ourselves Now 
that's kind of nice and even. Just making sure this doesn't get tangled. at the end, lift off, use our scissors, and fold over. Same principle as before, just folding over the edges of the foil onto the glass. Just going to use a quick, uh, the glass star crimper as well. Just do both edges at the same time. Once that's in place, we just pin it in. Just one more piece to go. Just unravel this. Again, sliding glass into the channel, putting the tool towards ourselves. Just making sure it doesn't get twisted. Pin the final piece in, making sure it's a nice tight fit. Ready for soldering. Now let me just talk you through this tool, show it a little bit more detail. That's the channel where the glass goes in. And the backing gets taken off as the foil comes out. Just like that. Okay, now the mirror board has been foiled. We've pinned it onto the board, kept it secure. We're going to tack it together first of all. We're using gel flux. Gel flux is a lot stronger flux than the aqua flux. Don't have to apply it as often. It's a lot more efficient, really. I prefer to use it. I'm um, using a 50-50 solder and um, basically we're just going to put a little bit of flux on the joins just so we can tack it together. Once we've tacked it together, kept it in place, we can remove the pins and do the proper bead solder join on the mirror. Only applying a small amount of solder to each tack. It's 
sufficient enough just to keep it all in place before we remove the pins. Okay, just removing the pins. Now at this point, the project's still very fling, flimsy and very fragile, so don't go moving the project about at all. Now we need to put the, a solid bead on. This will give it a little bit more strength, enabling us to flip it over and solder the other side. Again, doing a bead, using the corner of the solder iron, and this should create in a bowl, bowl of solder at the end of the tip. Again, steady flow all the way down, we'll give you a nice constant bead. Not to worry about it too much for the first time, we can always go back over if there's any lumps or bumps. Don't worry about the edges too much, we'll sort the edges out at the end. Just run the solder joint to the end. <coughs> okay, I'm just going to turn this around. You maybe might want to have a close look at this now, while I'm doing this. Again, I'm using the corner of the solder iron. Just running it gently on top of this, on the foil, heating up the foil and melting the solder down the tip, creating a nice ball which you can drag along and create a bead and don't worry about lumps like that because we can always go back and rework it now you can either run a bead, a continuous bead like so like this. For smaller, tighter, intricate pieces, you can just add bits, one bit, add a bit of solder, a bit at a time. Again, creating the same effect as a bead. I prefer to run, so it'll be quicker, more effective, and easier. I'm just going to turn it around again, have another quick look. Quite a quick process soldering. This is quite a big project, and um, pretty much halfway around already. <clears throat> Before long, your solder will run out, so. Get a new piece, and um, so the solder's quite expensive. So we just melt the smaller piece onto the larger piece, hence saving you 
fingers and a few pennies. Got too much solder on there, just use a flat of solder nine and just drag it off to the side and flick it. You can always use this solder further on your work. in a few pieces up. Okay, the soldering is all done now. As you can see, looking pretty good. But uh, don't dishearten if your work sort of comes out like that. It's not the end of it. We can uh, always rectify that. Simply just add a little bit more flux, because if without the flux, you won't get a, a nice constant bead. It'll start peaking like a meringue does when it's ready for the oven. So um, basically we just need to heat the solder up again. Again using the tip of the solder iron. And all we do, nice and slowly, heat it up. Because it's a liquid, it finds its own level and will form to a nice rounded bead. If you've got too much solder on there like, like we have there, we'll just drag the excess off onto the side. We'll flick it off onto the heat resistant board if you want. And again, just pick up that line again. A lot of people tend to sort of paint it on like that. What you're doing there, you're heating up the solder on top but you're not heating the solder underneath. Hence you're getting an overlap of solder. Don't be scared about leaving the solder and iron there for an amount of time because you're not really going to do any damage to any of the copper foil. On thin pieces you might break the glass but that's going to take a lot of heat to do that. As you can see, I've had it on there for quite a while. No damage. That's just drained that solder off to the edge. So merge them two together. Just heat. Heat up. It just blends all the joints together. Gives us a nice even bead all the way around. Again, just going to heat this up again and just drag it down slowly. I don't do any magic here, I'm just dragging the solder line towards me nice and slowly, constant speed. If you go too fast, you don't heat the solder up sufficiently enough. If you go too slowly, it doesn't do any damage to it. The slower the better. Again at the end, just drag the excess solder off to the side. And there we go. Perfect bead. So now the beading's done on the front face, we just need to strengthen up the edges of the border. I'm just going to tin these edges, so I'm just going to apply some flux first to the inside and the outside. Let's add a little bit of flux. I'm just going to put it like we did on the frog, just to give the outside edge and the inside edge just a bit of strength. Do the front face first and then work on the back side as well. I'm doing is just applying a small amount of solder and just running that along with a flat edge of the solder line. It's quite a quick process. I'm just going to do this outside edge as well now. Don't worry about the excess solder going over the edge, we we'll use that to build on the outside edge, giving it strength. As you can see now, because we've done the front face, it's got quite a lot of strength now to this border, enabling us to flip it over and do the back. Okay, we turned the project over. I'm just going to flux the back. I'm going to do a flat solder. This gives us strength to our piece. We're not going to be seeing the back, so we don't have to have a a nice rounded bead, just a flat solder is sufficient. 
and as well it saves on solder. Now I'm just using a flat the soldering iron, <coughs> excuse me, just using a flat the soldering iron, just applying a small amount of solder, and just dragging it along the join. And you will find that it spits a lot more on the back surface. Again, that's just due to the trap there expanding with the heat. Just be patient with it, and the bubbles, or the, the air will come out. I find the slower you work on the back, if you go fast, you create more bubbles, but if you go slow, Gives it a chance for the air to escape. I finished soldering the, the, the back side, doing a flat solder. I'm just going to finish off just tinning this inside edge like we did on the front face. Again, like I said, it doesn't have to be too accurate. So we'll tidy it up in just a second. So just to give a little bit of strength. Stop the foil being pulled off. Now we lift up our work. Now we need to work on the inside edge, this inside edge, and the outside edge. So basically, same as what we did in the frog. We need to keep the solder, well, the project horizontal. So as we're running this solder on, it doesn't run off. Again, just turn it, keeping it flat, just running this along, using all this excess solder which we had that built up on the edge. Okay, just outside edge to do now, and that's our border complete. Okay, outside just the same as the inside, working horizontally. And come to a just flip it.
slightly tipping your project towards the front face. Make a very nice rounded edge on the front face. Because we tin the front and back, when hit when doing this part, the solder flows over the front and back as well, creating a nice solid foil. Being careful not to burn yourself. It does get quite hot. There we have it. Just need to give it a little clean. Again, I'm just using a quick clean. This eliminates, eliminates the um, acids in the flux. Again, going along the length of the glass, being careful not to pull the edge off. You might notice that you got little pots and ends that just should just pull straight off. And again, do the same on the back. I'm getting to the end of the bottle here. Let's use this one. Ah, that's Okay. Okay, all nice and clean now. Now I uh, need to cut the size of the mirror. Here at Tempsford, what we like to do is cut the mirror slightly oversized and have it attached to the back of the border. So, instead of having it sitting in flush, this way it gives you more depth, gives you a bit more three dimensional to your mirror. We're just gonna mark the internal edge So I've laid the board up on top of a piece of mirror. I'm just going to mark here, top, and on the mirror at the top. We'll take the board away. That leaves us with our internal edge. Now I'm going to cut this, say about half an inch larger, all the way around. And again, breaking large pieces, just finger of thumb on the side, snap apart. Now, cutting mirror is exactly the same as cutting glass, normal glass, cutting the front face. It's no different from cutting ordinary glass.
crackers and that is fine. Just done that. Okay, so now the mirror is cut. Just gonna attach that onto the back once it's foiled. You can see it's overlapping. I'm gonna solder it at points of contact with the joins on the back, giving us a solid mirror. And after that we'll just put the hangers on. That's our mirror complete. And I'm just gonna get get this foiled. Pass it to my lovely assistant. Ah, oh, that's quick. <laughs> it's been it's been it's been foiled and it's been tinned as well. At this point, I suggest that you um, remove the pen line. A little bit of glass cleaner. And a little cloth. Just rub that on. There's nothing, nothing worse than having a little black line that you can't quite get to with your cloth. Every time we look in the mirror. Okay, so we lay it onto the back. One of the reasons why we've done a flat seam, so we've got a nice flush fit between the mirror and the border. Just trying to get it central. It's even the way around. Again, just a little bit of flux. Don't need much. Just on points of contact. Just to attach. And another reason why we um, put the mirror on the back is because if you add too much flux to these mirrors, the, the flux tends to eat underneath the back end of the mirror. And you'll get a, a brown mould appearing basically in between the glass and the mirror back end. With this way, that eliminates that, so you never have a, never ruin your mirror. So all I'm doing is just build a nice join between the edge of the mirror and the back of the border. Just work our way around. Last one here. Again, just give that flux a quick clean off. Now we could darken this down, but because it's a mirror, I prefer to leave them nice and silver. Let's give them a good polish. And I'll just clean this front. All that's left to do now is just to put the hanger on. some chain and um, that will be the mirror finished. As you can see, looking pretty good so far. So again we need to flip it over to the back and we'll just put the back in back the back chain on and the loops. For the hanging, we're going to use some uh, tin copper wire which has been stretched to um, make our tags and some chain. This is a number four chain. Just measuring out roughly how much chain we need. I'm just going to attach it to here and to here, which are strong joins. And because we're using a chain, it will hang straight no matter what. So it doesn't have to be balanced out evenly. 
Now tags, again we're just going to cut say about two inches. I'm just going to bend them in half. To create our tags. Thread one of the ends of the chain through the tag. And again on this side. Our first tag is going to get attached onto this join here. I'm going to slightly bend it up a bit. Small application of flux. I'm just going to gently tack it first of all. It does get quite hot, so I suggest using a pair of pliers just to keep it in place. Add some more solder just to build up that join. Okay, that's enough for that side. Just a little bit of a bend so it sits flush. <coughs> just tack it in place first of all because it does get hot quite quickly. Then using some pliers just to hold it in place. and build up that join. Let's wait for that to cool off. Again, give it a quick clean. Just to remove any unwanted flux. hangers and a chain. And all you know is the wall to hang up from. For the wall sconce we're going to be using the Deagle foiling machine. Now the Deagle foiling machine is a great tool. Uh, a couple of good points about it. One thing is that you can hold two different rolls of foil on at the same time. Uh, you can either have different back ends, like copper backed and black backed, or two different sizes 732, 316, the choice is yours. Basically, the foil is held in these reels. In this case, we've got 732 foil on here. <coughs> Adjust the pin, the pin goes through the hole for the 732. This is adjusts the gap for the reels. And the foil comes out the bottom, comes out the bottom around the first roller, up the second roller, and the backing gets taken off by the splitter. The splitter is adjustable when setting up. The foil pulls out, and the backing gets taken off, off and out the back. Also, a good thing about this is that we have an adjustable pin here. This centralises the glass on the foil. Uh, so you can have more foil on one side, 
bang in the middle or however you like it really. It's um, adjustable for different size foils so open the pin and that just moves from side to side. Easy adjustable. The way we set this is that we put the glass in the middle of the foil, push the pin up to the glass and then tighten the screw. Okay. Okay, starting with the green piece of glass, just using copper back foil. Now, start just past the edge again, resting the glass up against the centralising pin and pushing the edge of the glass onto the roller. As I'm pulling down, the backing has been taken off and put out the back. Always working in a downward motion, so when you come to a corner, turn the glass so the glass is going down at 90 degrees. You see how quickly that goes on? That's on nice and central. Again, use scissors, just keep a nice edge to the foil. Again, fold in over the edge. Now with the foiling machine, the Deagle foiling machine, we um, get a little tool called the quick crimp. This works the same as a glass star crimper. Little channel where the glass fits in, it does both sides at the same time. You can use a little bit of pressure with your finger and thumb. And as you can see, that foil has gone on perfect on both edges. It's ideal for use for doing bigger pieces as well because it frees up your hands completely. I'm just doing the mirror here. Again, starting just on the edge, glass up against the pin and on that roller. When it comes to the corner, turn the whole thing. So it's going, going at a downward motion. The good thing about this tool as well it keeps the tension nice and tight on the foil so you get no slack there so you get a nice even foil going onto the edges again just around the edge and you see how quickly that was to foil quite a large piece there again we use the quick crimp Just to burnish down the edges of foil onto the glass. Okay, last piece is a clear piece. The good thing about this machine is that we can have two different backings of foil on, and as it goes, we've got a piece of black backed on the other side. So I've just set the centralizer pin, and away we go. Just lift off just before the pin at the end and we can just snip away. Again, just fold the foil around the edges. Using a quick clip again. When you get to the corner, just release the pressure, swivel, then continue it around. Oops, slipped off that. Release some pressure, and as you can see, perfectly foiled all the way around. Okay, for our wall sconce, it's been foiled and pre tinned before assembly. Now, the reason we do that, it gives the edges to the foil, edges of the foil a lot more strength whilst putting it together. Because we're going to be renewing this about quite a lot, um, if it's just foil without the tin on it, you're more likely to pull it off. A little bit of solder on the edges, it just gives the foil a little bit more strength. Now, 
We've got four edges here, which we need to build up to attach onto the backing. And basically, we just we lift the two pieces together. We're going to do two pieces at a time. We're going to do these two pieces and then the back two pieces and then join them up. And hopefully, they should fit the back. First of all, just going to line these two up like so. So, we've got a nice little channel going down the middle. Also, tinning it, you don't have to use as much heat when applying a solder, it's more of an instant attach between the two pieces of glass. A little bit of solder. I'm just going to do it at the top and bottom at first until we've got our angles. Again, I'll just do the same with these two pieces at the back. I'll show you at the front. It can be quite tricky just lining these up, getting them to stay where you want them to at first. Move this back in out of the way for a second. Now we're going to tally these two corners together. Good to do it on a flat surface as well because you're always working from a flat edge there, so all your pieces should line up reasonably well when you come to the end. There we go. Now we're not going to give it a, a proper solder yet, we're just going to attach the back first, making sure everything's square. It's a lot easier just to undo these little tack joins than it is to do a complete solder join. There we go, lay the square on top. That looks pretty, pretty square for me. to me. Now just going to run some flux along the edge. Soldering at the corners at first, just to make sure everything's square. I should have a bit of substance to it now, and I've attached that back so you can flip it over. <coughs> now we need to do the same again. With these outside edges, so just move this to the side for the time being. And it's going to be a bit more of a shallow angle. This time I'm just going to at the bottom first. Okay, we 
do the same again with these two. these two halves together. Hopefully, that should fit on top. Like so. Again, flux around the edges. I'm just going to join it at the corners, like the bit of bottom section. Some basics of basically putting together the wall sconce. Now I just need to concentrate on these edges and giving them a solid bead and around the outside bottom edge, which I'll show you in just a sec. Because it's a three dimensional shape, it's going to be quite awkward to hold us in one position because we need to run the solder along on a parallel horizontal so it doesn't run off, go over either side. We use these handy little wedges, they're rubber wedges, so the glass resists against it so it doesn't slide down. If you wanted to, you could use a smaller one just to wedge the other end, to stop it from sliding in any direction. And making sure that's nice and flat and level. We need to fill in this join. Now we need to put a little bit more solder on there than usual, because we need to fill the actual soldering into the gap. It saves us to do a lot more, so we need to solder the inside but if you put a lot more solder on this side it enables you an easier sold, solder on the back. And it might fall through like what it's done there, but just be patient, wait for that to go set again and then just reapply it. Sometimes better just to put up a little seam going all the way along first. This is slightly different from running the seam because we need to fill it. So we're using quite a lot more solder. I'm doing a bit by time. Same principle using the corner of the solder line. So when I lift that off that gives it a nice rounded edge. So first we just want to put a nice little run along. And then we can just come back and fill it.
And again, we need to do this back edge. So I'm using the rubber block on this side now. Just keeping it stable. Just stop it from falling over. We'll just wedge that block in. Just to keep it in one position. Um, just like I said, just put a, a bead initially to fill the gap in. Then we can go back and just rework it if we needed to. Okay, that's the soldering finished on the outside. Now, just on the inside, we um, need to do a quick flat solder just to tidy up the edges. Um, you might get a few drips of solder which have come through from the outside front edge. This is the time we just take them off and just go around all the seams, just smoothing it all down and taking off any excess solder lumps. Now for the hanger, I've left this part of the solder bead not soldered, so I'll use a bit of tin copper wire again, bend it to a hook, then we can just bend these out at the angle of the wall sconce trim these bits down Add a little bit of flux. Again, it's the gel flux we're using for this. Just going to tap this in place first of all. Just 
customer attached this side. Okay, and then we need to build up this join, add a little bit more solder, and then blend it in to the bead on the edge. Okay, as you can see, it's soldered on nice and strong. Hanger ready for hanging. Okay, it's all soldered now. Hanger's been applied. All we need to do now is just give it a, a patina. For this one, we're going to be using a copper patina. Give it a nice copper finish. It's essential that the surface that you're applying the patina needs to be free from any moisture. So we need to give it a good dry first. And also the pad that we're applying the patina with, the patina pad or cloth, needs to be dry from any water. If not, you'll get a black streaky residue left on your finish. So, again, simply just apply the patina, like we did to the pad and rub around and we don't need to let this set and take for too long just need to apply it and then pretty much just take it off of a cloth, dry cloth onto these edges Just take off all the excess solution off. There we go, got a nice copper antique finish on there. Just going to give it a quick clean. <coughs> Inside and out. And finally just give it a good polish, a bit of furniture polish. Oh, I like to use Mr. Sheen. Gives you a nice deep colour there. Shines it up.
And there we have it. Nice copper finish. So a wool sconce, ready for the plant.